Hey, I'm Anfa. Today I want to show you a productivity tool that I've made. It's called HyperTimer, and it's made to help defeat time blindness. Time blindness is something that people suffering from ADHD experience. When they can finally focus on something, they often, or sometimes or often, enter something called hyperfocus, which means that their window of attention is very, very narrow. So uh, people with attention deficits usually have trouble focusing on anything in particular. If things are happening around them, it's really hard for them to filter that out or even impossible. But when that all gets, you know, uh, calmed down and they can actually focus on something, they can focus so much they totally forget that the world around the world around exists. And this can be problematic because they can, for example, focus on things that don't matter because they don't realize how much time they're spending on them. Mm, so I made this tool for myself to help me with my work because I've realized I often blow my time budget on certain tasks because I don't follow how much time I'm spending and how much time I have left. And traditional timers well, various timers I've tried never really worked for me for various reasons. And it's all described on the uh, README page for this project on Codeberg. Mm. Let me just show you what it is. So hyper timer is this thing window here. Um, right now it's recovering from a... <laughs> I restarted the system um, without like stopping anything. So it it realized that it was stopped unexpectedly and recovered the state of the timer. So if I press this, it will keep going. So we can see it was set to one hour. And this is where the slider is. And we're like nearing the eight minutes. So let me reset that. Actually, we need to click and hold because resetting is a destructive operation, same as closing. So you can't just click, you need to click and hold. And let me show this from up close. So you click and hold. And once you hold for long enough, it closes. Let's start it again. The tool is made in Godot game engine, by the way. So first thing, you can set the timer to how much you want. Like, say you have a task that will take you that should take you eight hours. You can set it to eight hours click set, then you can hide the controls. And this is your timer. You can put this wherever you want on your screen. For example, in a top right corner. And this will stay on top. So whatever I do, hyper timer is going to stay visible. Yeah, you can't really obscure it with anything. Everything will stay below it. Mm. So that's one thing. Uh, seven hours, 59 minutes, it's, it's a long time to go. So maybe I'm going to cancel that and set it instead for 15 minutes. If I right click on the slider, it toggles the precision and I can now set in 15 minute intervals. Let's do that. Right, so the time is going. You can see that the progress bar is slowly shrinking. It's also going to change color. So there is a gradient which, um, after using this for a bit, I've learned the gradient and I'm kind of can tell how much time I have left based on the color alone. Um, the point of this timer is to help people who suffer from ADHD, like myself, to keep a continuous awareness of the time they have to do a task. As it's super easy to just forget what's what's happening and that I'm using my time and that I have a limited amount of it. The problem with different timers I've tried is that they are usually just digits. They, they don't use color. They're tiny. They 
if they are, can like stay on top uh, or like if they can be visible at all times, it's either a, an unwieldy square window or a tiny thing on my taskbar, like in the in the system dock, where you know it doesn't really. It's it it takes conscious effort to check the time, and when I'm in hyper focus, I can't really take that effort because in hyper focus, uh, checking the time feels like way too much effort and like wasting my current capacity on like doing something that doesn't really help me it's like i want to stay focused on what i'm doing because right now i'm in the in the state where i can be productive uh, highly productive and i will try to avoid anything that can me bring me out of that state because it's difficult to enter that state and it's very valuable because you can work very efficiently in that state. But you can also blow all your time on unimportant detail, like I often do. I focus on minute things and perfect them instead of ensuring that I have the gist of my task finished before I get into detail. But since I've been working using HyperTimer, I haven't had this same problem. And if you don't see the need for something like that, that's probably because you don't have ADHD and you don't need to supplement yourself with something like this. But to me, it's amazing. It's like some someone like gave me a uh, a seventh sense uh, of time passing, and I um, hypertimer is by default 10, 1080 pixels wide. And that's because I use a secondary vertical screen, like secondary screen in a in a portrait mode. And this fits like right in on it. And I just can put the timer on top and, you know, lock it down and it will um, help me keep have a reference, a time that I can just, you know, look at with a corner of my eye and I'll already see the color, see the shape and have an awareness of where I am um regarding my time limits my time budget for for what i'm doing let's take a look at all the features so you can click and drag to reposition the hyper timer you can click and drag on this arrow here to resize the window excuse the flickering um uh, there's not much i can do about it right now and if you right click on these arrows it will maximize HyperTimer to the current screen horizontally, which is useful if you, for example, want to glue it to the top of your screen because, you know, there is no snapping yet, but this is the next best thing. Now, after you set the place where you want it to be and as how wide you want it to be, you can lock it down with this padlock. And this means that you can no longer move it or resize it. Uh, as I've shown also, you can't easily close it. So you can't just click by mistake and close this. You need to click and hold. Same with canceling your timer. You can't just click. You need to click and hold. So it requires like a... The application is, self, is like safeguarded against accidentally messing something up. Especially if you hide the controls which is like the target mode in which you're supposed to use this, because now it shows nothing but the time you have left. And you can't move it, you can't close it. Um, it's just there and you can do your work, whatever you need to, and it's gonna just be there, remind you of how much time you have left to do it. Now, it might not fit this particular place, so let's unlock it. Let's shrink it. And I plan to add more ways to shrink it, like to make it even more shrinkable. But now, for now, it is what it is. So, okay, let's lock it down. Now, the problem here is that I don't see the seconds passing, which is uh, unnerving to me because I'm don't, not sure if the time is going or not. So I can extend it a little bit to see the, the seconds going. And this is also important because another issue I have with various uh, typical timers is they don't show seconds. 
they just show hours and minutes. And I don't know if the time is flowing. I don't feel like the time is flowing. I feel like it's frozen. And I'm, all I have is like random snapshots when I do take the conscious effort to look at the time. And then, <clears throat> you know, if I just look at the clock, I need to also then calculate, like remember, what was the time when I started the task? How much time has passed? And now remember, how, what, how, what was my time budget? And then subtract that and then calculate to how much time do I have left and what part of the whole time budget have I already spent? This is why HyperTimer is just this, because... Uh, wrong thing. Because this allows you to simply, you know, exactly see all you need to know. How much time you have left and what part of the whole time slot is this. Right, so uh, maybe, maybe a little bit extra about some features. So you can pause the timer, for example, if you find that, oh, uh, you need to like stop doing what you're doing. You actually need to pause and switch to something else. Um, and then you want to go back. This is especially to be used if you have like, you know, multiple hour long tasks or even multiple day long tasks, because this slider goes up to 48 hours, which, you know, I arbitrarily decided when designing this app that that's probably going to be the max you would ever want to like track with this because it's not you know meant as a <laughs> track the, the the yearly progress or monthly progress on something it's more like um see how far you are uh, in your time budget for something All right, so you can't resize things when you're locked down so let's unlock it oh i see a little bug maximizes if you change this the width where it's paused okay gotta write that down <clears throat> yeah so um it also features some sound effects for when the time is out time is time is up um you can mute the sound if you don't want it by default it's on um it will like give you a heads up 10 seconds after it's all over and then it's gonna like start animating and um, bring your attention to the fact that your time slot is over. Um, what else? Um, other stuff is pretty much um, just per permanence and like crash recovery and stuff. So, um, oh, maybe a tiny little detail. You might see that the, um, the progress bar is not... Um, not moving by pixels, it's, it's anti-aliased, it's moving by sub-pixels, which is... <laughs> and that's sort of something was, that was bothering me when I just saw, you know, the pixels just changing ra abruptly. It's still... we could use more anti-aliasing, but that's probably going to be a configurable setting at some point, you know, because I also don't want this to, like, hammer your graphics card. This is just a timer. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Okay, that's minor. You can see that the colors are changing. Now we're like now we're now we are at pinkish. So uh, permanence. If you lock it down, uh, you can't change the place, and it will remember where it was and how wide it was, no matter what. Uh, if you force close the program, let's do that. From will X skill work? No, it doesn't. I tried this recording this video before and it didn't. And I don't know how is that even possible, but it doesn't. So let's just try and do Godot. Um, maybe hyper timer. Yep. So what is this? Yeah, 81 megabytes. That's probably this. So let's just end the process. Yep. You see, we can, we killed our timer, but we can bring it back. Let's just start the application again. And you see, it remembers where it was 
And it shows us a specific a special animation here to let us know that hey, you can recover. What was what happened was not an expected thing. And so we can recover that and carry on. If we wanted to drop that, we had to hit reset. But remember, you need to press and hold to do that. Now we can close it. Is it going to lose our time? No. <laughs> it's going to save the progress and then tell you, hey, want to resume? Yeah, I want to resume. And you can see that it always starts in the same place at the same width because it's locked down. If I unlock it, I can close it. It's going to start in a default place at a default width. So this is something to... Yeah, this is this here little bug. This is something to... Oh, we can close it forcefully from here as well. So it's gonna... Oh no, it didn't... It didn't... It didn't crush forcefully. It, it's resuming. But you can see it also spawned again on the middle in our screen at the default width because we didn't lock it down. So always lock it down once it is in the place you want it to be. <sighs> what else is there? Um, there are configuration files or like generally various uh, files. No. Yep. Also, um, you can get this uh, application on Codeberg. The address is I wonder why is this so dark? Uh, no, I don't want this. I guess it's, a, it's just a Firefox theme. So, the website is codeberg.org slash anfa slash hypertimer. Let me make this a little bit wider so you can see it all. So if you go to this website, you will find this application here. And in the releases, you will find all the downloads. What you're seeing now is release 0.2.3, which I have not published yet, but once this video is out, it should already be here. And you can read all about what and why in the README document here, which is quite long, and goes into detail why I made this, how I made this, and what does it do. And this video is meant to serve as a tutorial and an explanation, so you can just get to use it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, the program is open source. It's licensed under, under the GPL v3 or later license. Uh, it's a tool I made for myself, but I, I thought there's more people who probably have the same troubles as I do and might want to use this and would benefit from using such a tool. And I really couldn't find anything out there um, that would fit this role. I have ideas for more features. For example, I imagine it would be nice to have screen snapping so we can like move it and we'll just snap to edges and to corners. I guess it would also be nice to be able to shrink it even more to maybe reduce the text to 0H, 00M instead of hours, minutes, you know, to make it even smaller. I also think it would be nice maybe to have a, as like a slim mode where you can like basically slash the height of this window in half to just have a tiny, tiny uh, progress bar, which is which would be even slimmer and nicely fit on top of your screen. Mm. There's other things that are missing, which aren't really um, something I I know how to deal with because it's not a feature in Godot. Uh, for example, the hyper timer will always be present in your tool in your taskbar. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure out how to make it skip the taskbar. Um, if there is maybe a, a Godot extension uh, that does stuff like that on multiple systems, then Feel free, feel free to let me know. 
Um, also, if you are familiar with Godot and would like to contribute to this project, um, let me know. Um, get in touch. Uh, you can leave a comment on, on my YouTube channel in this video, or you can contact me on Mastodon, uh, which is also listed in here. Yep. Yay. So yeah, if you go to mastodon social dot social slash at anfa, you will find my public profile there, and you can you can at me. Okay, we're nearing the time uh, the timeouts event, and uh, I want you to see and hear this because uh, I've been really having fun making this, and I'm going to show you what is happening. So we are synthesizing some sounds. We're synthesizing two sounds. One of the sounds is um, various random events. That's this thing. Yeah, I guess it's pretty hard to miss that. Yeah, that's what uh, ADHD does. You, you spend your nights doing stuff like that instead of sleeping. I guess, since I already made it, I might just as well um, show it to you and let you uh, have some fun and, you know, if you don't want that, you can turn the sound off. <clears throat> so... Oh, I see a little bug, yeah. The stop button should have animated background color. Ah, oh, it's not a bug, I know what it is, yeah, okay. Um, so, to stop it, you need to hit, click, and hold stop. And then it will stop the timer and you can s set it anew. Oh. Well, well, well... Yay. Also, configuration files. Yay. Oh, look at... yeah. Sorry for the jittery dragging. I don't know how to fix that. If you do... Oh, another bug! Hold on, I thought I fixed this one. Whoa, crazy. Wait, five minutes? It's not possible to set the timer so so low. What? Okay, things are not... Things are... Yeah, okay, there's still some bugs. <laughs> um, there is a... There is... I see, it seems like Kate is... Kate is uh, having a... Having a bad time now. Mm. What I wanted to say is... Uh, there is... A configuration file that you can access. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this and just do that. If you go to your home folder, dot local share Godot app user data hyper timer, and then there's file settings, you will see this. And here is uh, storing various settings that you do. It also saves some stats, like how many times you've reached the end of the timer, how many times you have started the timer, how many times have you canceled the timer before it went out, uh, how many hours did the timer track total, like, uh, and how many times you've been recovering from autosave, Ugh, is the window locked? What is the window position and what is the window width? You might see there's a couple of diff weird characters in front. Uh, and this is the length of the, the entire text. So you can't, you can't modify this file, but if you change the length, uh, it's not going to load properly. So be wary. Be wary of that. Why is Kate flipping? Yeah, I think... Uh, having some freezing things. 
Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. I hope HyperTimer is going to be a nice tool for you and will help you as it is helping me. Take care. Bye.